Hello, and welcome to today's episode of... Tulemanjaro! Today we're going to be taking a look at something that I've been working on for the last couple of months. This is a CNC router. So this is something that I've wanted for a long time. I actually wanted a CNC milling machine, but CNC milling machines are extremely expensive. Um, CNC routers can also be extremely expensive, particularly if you get one of those big 4x8 ones, a professional quality one. They can run, you know, 10, 20 grand. Um, smaller ones, the type that they sell at a place like Rockler or Woodcraft, you know, with a bed about this size, they still run maybe $1,000, $2,000. That was way more than I was willing to spend on something that I don't really have any use for um, and something I just wanted to fool around with. So I was looking for ways to be able to build something like this for a lot less money. The problem with this is that there's three different axes that you have to worry about. You have to worry about your uh, X axis, your Y axis, and your Z axis. And since there's three of those, you need uh, to be able to drive each one of those axes, uh, you need to control each one, and you need some way to slide them. So your price triples from whatever kind of low price you might think of to begin with. So that made it very difficult to get the price down pretty low. Um, I was able to build this for about $150. Now that's not including some of the things that you see here, like the computer to, to control it, the router, the router bits. Those are things that I either have or are basically consumable. So I didn't include those in the price. So let's get into uh, what I actually put together here. So the first thing you can see, the kind of most obvious thing is the frame. Now I just was kind of building this on the fly, so it's almost entirely made of scrap wood. It's made of scrap 2x4s and scrap plywood that I had laying around. Um, this is a great choice, it's very easy to work with, it's cheap, I had lots of it laying around. If I mess up a piece, I can just throw it out and build another piece. Um, and if you make the pieces bulky enough, you know, this is a full 2x4, two, two of them stacked together, they can be quite stiff. Now it's not going to be as stiff as an aluminum piece or a steel framed router, but it's still quite stiff for, and for the work that I was doing, it's plenty strong enough. Taking a look at the software for this, um, I start with a CAD package to develop the model that I'm going to try and cut on the router. So the first step is to draw that in a CAD package. I use Fusion 360 for this. It's a great program. It's free for small uh, startups or hobbyists, so that's really nice. After I finish drawing it in that CAD package, Fusion 360 also has a CAM package that I can use to generate the tool paths um, and post process them and spit out the G code. From there, I take that G code and import it into this program here, which is BCNC. It's another free program. And what BNC, BCNC will let me do is actually control the router. So from here, I can use the arrows or the touch screen here to move it around. And it can also open up the code. As you can see here, I have some tool paths loaded to cut a gear, and I can run them from here. So what this uh, software is talking to is this Arduino Uno over here, and it's running some software called Gerbler, um, G-R-B-L. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, what it does is it actually drives these motor controllers here. These are all stepper motor controllers, and they, in turn, drive these steppers up here. So this Uno is very inexpensive. These motor controllers each are fairly inexpensive as well. I'll put a full bill of materials um, later on in the, the, the video here so you can see the breakdown of all the costs on them. But you still need three of them, so it kind of adds up. So each one of these takes the pulses that come out of the Uno and amplifies them to control the steppers. These steppers here are the most expensive part of this project. Each one of these was about $25. Um, I started off trying to build this with some smaller steppers, but they really weren't powerful enough for the job. These seem to be plenty powerful enough. Um, bigger steppers would let it be more powerful, would let it uh, be a little bit more rigid, and would make it go a little bit faster. But as you go faster, you tend to run into issues with the stability of the frame, the stability of your linear, linear motion setup, um, and also the accelerations tend to get a little wonky. So I think for this setup, these are plenty fast enough and plenty powerful enough. Each one of these motor controllers is 5 amps, and these steppers only pull about uh, 4 amps, so there's plenty of overhead there, even if I wanted to make them a little bit more powerful. So the next step after the motors is to get the uh, motion from the motors into a linear motion on the, the either the slides or on the router itself. So for the vertical one, I've used an Acme threaded screw here, to, and that raises and lowers it. Um, that works great for this because there's always gravity pushing down on that. That way any of the backlash that might be in the screw, it doesn't matter because gravity is always pushing down on it. Uh, for the other axes, what I chose to do was uh, these belts here, these tooth belts. So you, on the end of the stepper motor, you put a little pulley that has these little teeth on it, and they mesh with this, and then you can run this between two bearings, and as this rotates, it slides this back and forth. Now the slides was the biggest challenge of this project. Um, what you really want is some nice 
dovetailed long steel rails that are precision ground that have uh, these sleds on them that have lots of ball bearings on them that can have very little free play in them. They transmit the load great. They're extremely rigid. And of course, they're also extremely expensive. Now that's what all the high-end machines use. It's even what a lot of high-end CNC machines use, CNC milling machines use. Uh, they'll use bigger ones, obviously. But for something like this, um, I didn't want to spend that much money on it. So what I instead went with was these drawer slides here. You can see them sticking out here. So these are full extension uh, ball bearing ball drawer slides. The one for the base is a 24 inch one and that lets it slide pretty nicely. They don't have too much free play. I did also add these two things here, which you can't really see, but they're roller bearings that push it to this side and elim eliminate a lot of the play that's in there. Add some rigidity to it and it lets it cut a lot better. So on the vertical ones, I didn't do that, and it's still fairly rigid. You can shake it around a little bit, um, but for the forces involved in cutting, particularly with these small bits, it's perfectly fine. I built this router mostly to do little carvings like this, this eagle here and this uh, V22 Osprey here, but I also wanted to see if I could use it to make some of these gears here. Um, this is just a coarse trial here, so it's pretty rough around the edges. I ran it very quickly. It only took about three or four minutes to cut this gear out. And it, it seems to have worked pretty well. I think if I had slowed down the feed rate and used something besides some pre-finished plywood, I think this would have worked really well. So these are some of the things that I can do with it. Um, I'm going to fire it up right now. Now this is a piece of maple. I've not tried this uh, to start with here, so we'll see how well it cuts a piece of maple. Mostly what I've been doing is pine so far. I think it'll probably cut pretty well. I'm going to start pretty slowly though just to see how it, how it deals with it. So let's start it up. And then I'll start my program here. I'm going to lower the feed rate here, and then we'll start it up and um, see how it goes. I'm going to increase the feed rate a little now. So I stopped that because I noticed that the, the, the step over that I had on the bit was way too big. It's leaving some nice big grooves here. So I need to go back and adjust that. I also found that this bit cuts a lot better if I go uh, the other way clockwise. And um, I forgot to set that when I was generating the tool paths. So this is a work in progress. I've already been working on it for a little while, improving things here and there. I'm going to continue to do this. You may have noticed that there's a fair bit of flex forward and backwards here. So that's something that I want to work on. Uh, I also want to work on the biggest problem with this right now is that dust will get in the slides down here. If this has been cutting for a long time, the sawdust, no matter how hard I try, seems to always to migrate down into the slides down here. Once the ball bearings get dust on them, uh, sawdust on them, then they jump a little bit and eventually they even get jammed. But it uh, really hurts the cutting accuracy of the machine. So that's something that I need to, to work on. I'm going to replace these drawer slides, at least for the horizontal one, with some electrical conduit with ball bearings running around the side of it. Now, electrical conduit is not the straightest thing in the world, but for this setup, I think it should be perfectly fine. And it'll be nice rigid. I'm going to use pretty large diameter stuff, so it should be nice and rigid. Um, so we'll see how that improves things. So to go over the bill of materials for this a little bit, uh, I'll put that up, up over here. You can see I spent $25 on each one of these stepper motors. Each one of the drawer slides you can get on Amazon for about $5. Each one of these motor controllers is about $12. Um, the uh, belts, that leave, these, these tooth belts, you can get for about five bucks. And so that left about $10 for this slide here and another $10 for the Uno controller here. So it works out to about $150 plus or minus a couple dollars. This is certainly not the best design in the world. I don't encourage anybody to go out and try and copy this. 
However, I just wanted to be able to see something that I could, could throw together with not spending a tremendous amount of money, to be able to see how well it would work, to be able to see what kind of workflows I could get out of it, how much actual work it would take to produce things, you know, doing the CAD up front and generating the tool paths, and learn a lot about this. So this is something I'm gonna to continue to improve. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find some more uses for it. And hopefully if uh, people are interested in it, I'll show some updates in the future, or I can also go into more details about either the software that is uh, behind this or the build in general. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see future videos of mine, feel free to hit the subscribe button.